Put up. Let's just study. Awesome. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John. Three top, three main disciples, if you would. And it's funny that there's three of them. Matthew 17, 1. Okay. Sorry. So this is, I'm going to just do this too in the future. I'm just kind of testing it out. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably at night just kind of start doing uh, just like studies and just do what I normally do uh, with the Lord. Um, obviously not our time, the Lord's time, mine and the Lord's time. But and just open it up and just have, you know, if anybody out there just wants to read, just wants to grow together and just wants to study and, and read the word together. Yeah, so why not? Because that way we can all come in and we can all, you know, share and talk and whatnot and just kind of grow together. Because that's what it's all about. It's just about growing together. Because the, the word says, you know, go out and preach the word and preach the word to the world. You know, obviously people have gifts um, of teaching and wisdom, but God can work through all of us. This is the Holy Spirit. We can all learn from each other. So let's just grow together. Okay, now after six days, uh, ten. six days, so the number, I guess, of man right before completion, it's almost completed on that sixth day. Okay, that's when God finished the world, and then on the seventh day, he rested. So Jesus took Peter, James, and John. Oh, Peter, James, and John. Oh, yeah, John, his brother. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Got the fam in the back. In the other room. Okay. Led them up on a high mountain by themselves. Okay, so they're all by themselves. It's Christ and the three disciples on the sixth day. And this is Mount Tabor. Let me see. So Mount Tabor. Sweet. See, this is why, like, you know, you can just get get with the Lord too on your own. You're gonna you're gonna learn the most, and, and you're gonna really grow the most with the Lord. And uh, it's just so amazing because you just let the Holy Spirit take you. You can use what the enemy has taken with technology, and uh, use it for good. Okay, so it's mentioned first, Joshua, this border of the three tribes. Its important stems from its strategic control of the junction of the Galilee's north-south route. So Galilee too, notice too, Galilee, even though Christ was born in Bethlehem, Raised in uh, Nazareth, he's a Galilean, so north and south with east and west highway. So it's almost just right dab right in the center. Just that mountain, boom, overlooks everything. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm going to put Joshua 19, because we'll just go there and just kind of read the scriptures. Why not? But I'm also just going to put. Um, mountains import, important strategic control uh, of, of Galilee's highway. 
the mountain's important. Okay, strategic control of Galilean, of the junction of Galilean. East West. All right, so right in the middle. Oh, here we go. Let's see this real quick. Oh, dome shaped mountain. That's interesting. Kind of like the world. But the churches won't tell you that. Most of them won't. I heard one one pastor bring it up, which I respect him for that, but most churches won't. Most churches won't get past the uh, firmament in Genesis 1, which because they're too worried about uh, what people think about it, because it's just more of a business. So Mount Tabor, the dome-shaped mountain. And it's funny, we see, okay, Christ going up on this mountain to, and transfigures, and we're going to see the two, uh, Elijah and Moses, which I believe are the two prophets in Revelation. I believe Elijah is one of them, definitely. I don't think John the Baptist is, just because, um, well, because John the Baptist was the, the last actual prophet. But I just believe it's Moses, because it had to do with him, um, obviously, with the Old Testament law and... God's judgment and judgment on his people and on the um, the the Gentiles if you would and then also with what had happened with Elijah being taken up he was he, he never tasted death and there's what's prophesied about his spirit if they're uh, accepting of it so I believe that it's Elijah and Moses because that's just how the Bible works too is you can take it and just copy and paste it not like literally but you can just kind of line it up and see but you know maybe not so two thousand feet above sea level okay appears loftier okay so just a nice a familiar landmark always there but dome shame mountain after six days with the three disciples and the two prophets Mount Tabor played a uh, prominent role in Israel's history making a boundary between the tribes of Iskar, Naphtali, Zebulun, the Amar's ancient international trade highways passed near Mount Tabor and made use of point okay. Compares the two peaks in Jeremiah, Lynx, Tabor, prominence in Mount Carmel. As surely as I live, declares the king whose name is the Lord Almighty, one who will come. Is like Tabor among the mountains, like Carmel by the sea, Jeremiah. Awesome. Okay, so that's where we're at. Let's actually just go to, um, yeah, Joshua Okay, so it's actually 
is the border there. So, and the border reaches to Tabor, Shahazma, and Beth Shemesh. Their border ended at Jordan, 16 cities with their villages. So this was the entire Hatera. This was the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Iskar, according to their families and cities and their villages. Okay. So real quick, let's just go to let's go back to Matthew. That's where we're at. Let's see if we can just kind of okay. And he was transfigured before them; his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. So. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His face actually shone bright as sun. It says his clothes became white as the light. So we see him actually transfigure here. Peter sees him transfigure in his glory. And it's obviously to show that Christ being God has power here in the world as well. It's just his mission, his you know, plan, his uh, the will of God for him to fulfill. So like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. As white as the light. Now think about too, back then they didn't have electricity. It's not like what we have today where we go into stores and uh you know where we just have it we can just turn on a light so it was the majority of what they were just seeing was sunlight you know obviously so you see the glory the power and what the sun can do and transfiguring right in front of um his disciples just the three three of them the closest ones if you would and it's you know it's crazy too is it's almost like because it's six days God created the world in six days on the seventh day he rested after six days Peter James and John led them up on that high mountain Christ laid down his life on that mountain not this same mountain but the one that's very close to it the thief um, the thief and then the uh, sinner next to him be like Christ in the middle showing his glory showing his power who he is being God Elijah and Moses on each side the thief and the sinner on the other side hmm let's see shown like the sun he became as white as light and behold Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with him it says and behold Moses okay And he was, okay, and behold, Moses and Elijah. Appeared to them. Talking with him. So Christ, obviously being God, can do what he wants, but Moses and Elijah, obviously being in the kingdom of heaven, they just come back right down whenever God wants them to. It's amazing. And they appear just talking with him. So it says, And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If you wish, let us make here the tabernacle, three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. So, Notice here, Peter could recognize him too. 
even though Moses and Elijah were in the spirit, Christ transfiguring, when he, he transfigured, Peter still recognized Christ. Peter recognized Moses, recognized Elijah. And he asked, Lord, is it good for us to be here? It, if you wish, let it make their three tabernacles, one for you, Moses, and Elijah. Awesome. Peter showing his... You see why? is Peter and his disciples following after Christ, following him, obeying him, humbling him. God knows everything. Peter, if, if you wish, let us make their three tabernacles. God already knowing ahead of time. But do you see what happens when we just obey, just follow, humble ourselves, go after his wishes, his will? God will show us stuff. God will work in our lives. And it's when it's by off of his will, not off our own, just whenever he decides to do so. You'll see God just work in your life. It's amazing. So amazing. Okay, so... Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? Excuse me. Notice, notice his how humble Peter is too, and he's even speaking for James and John. Like, Lord, just say it. We'll get out of here. Like, I'll make sure that they come too. But it's you wish. So even though they followed him all the way up on that mountain, man, this is crazy. Could you imagine? See, a lot of people dog on Peter because when Christ says, "Get behind me, Satan." He's not talking to Peter. He's talking to the flesh because that's the sin nature. That's literally what you inherited. Christ had to put on the sin nature, the flesh. That's why you have to die to yourself. That's why the flesh dies. Because he says right before that, when he's saying, who do men say that I am? And, you know, some say that John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some others say like Moses. And, uh, is that he says, well, who do you say that I am? So when he says it, he says, it, notice how he says, he doesn't matter what the world says who I am. Who do you say that I am, Peter? And that's for you too. Who, it doesn't matter what the world says about Christ. Who do you say that Christ is? And Peter says, well, you're, you're Christ. You're the Mashiach. You're Christos. You're the Savior. You're the Anointed One. And he says, wow, Peter. You know, flesh and blood didn't, re notice that flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But my father who is in heaven. So yes, he says Simon Bar Jonah, which means Yonah means dove. So a lot of the times what they'll do is they'll say just the Greek part of it, which is means little devil. But that's just one side. That's just the flesh nature. When Christ says, get behind me, Satan, he's not talking to Peter because Peter is in the flesh. Peter's in the spirit. So Bar Jonah bar Yonah means dove because that's the spirit the spirit of God is in Peter So notice how humble a lot of people dog on Peter, but a true son gets disciplined. Peter was blessed look at what God revealed to Peter and Christ Christ was not referring to Peter. That's why I said get behind me Satan Because it, it was the flesh. That's why he referred to Peter beforehand in the spirit so even after all that, and, and when we look here in verse 4, they went all even after going all the way up in the mountain, and think about it, you see Elijah and Moses appear before you, you see Christ in his glory. Any of us will want to just stay there and just soak it in. But Peter, he says, Lord, is it good for us to be here? Let us go. Let's grab a tabernacle. That's amazing. That's a true disciple right there. So, Good for us to be here. Lord, if you wish. Let us make here three tabernacles.
One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Alright, so verse 5, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and they were greatly afraid. Wow, could you imagine the voice of God? Think about that, so much power, so much boldness. And just hearing the voice of God, could you imagine that the thundering, just the rumble, shaking from the inside? Man, not only seeing the power, the glory manifest, but also hearing it and feeling it, they were getting the entire thing. Because, well, the Spirit of God was also up upon them. The Holy Spirit might not have been in them because Christ hadn't given up the ghost yet, but the Spirit was still upon them. Christ was still right there. While he was still speaking, behold. That's another thing too, as we see following after Christ, given into authority of him being humble. Even when we're, uh, we're so prone sometimes to just, you know, uh, call out to him, pray, 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 pray. But sometimes we need to just be quiet and just get in our word and let him talk to us. Because we see here too, he, Peter was interrupted. Even though Peter was humbling himself, God all had it planned. Sometimes, you know, we need to just let God speak. Let God speak to us. And, uh, yes, yeah, it's amazing. So, while he was still speaking, behold a bright cloud. overshadowed them could also be the just like in the Old Testament with Moses in the desert where they had the flame of fire at nighttime and God God's presence would just carry with them through day and through night and this could also be looked at too with the Christ being the tabernacle himself but that cloud that comes over that cloud that comes over the tabernacle because it's the father the father that speaks to him, just like it's the father that was in the midst of his children with Moses in, in the desert, but also with his children, his disciples, in this moment right here too with that this cloud, his presence. This is, when we look at the Old Testament and you see how God moved with his tabernacle, with his people, Christ is the tabernacle of man. So he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud. Yeah, because it was like the voice came out of the cloud. It's just like the Old Testament. Overshadowed. Notice how Peter referred to him, oh, can we get you tabernacles? But this is the new covenant that Christ is laying down. It's not the old where God will dwell in tabernacles made, you know, where, where it's the high priest that goes in and, and has to apply the blood of the holy of holy places. It's now Christ that's the tabernacle that we can now enter in directly. And it's amazing. It's God over his, over where he dwells, literally, which is Christ. So, it suddenly... A voice came out of the cloud. Saying. This is my beloved son. In whom. I am well pleased. Hear him.
God telling his disciples, God telling these prophets, telling us in these scriptures is to hear him. He is the word of God. He is the truth. It's now by him. This is obviously God himself all throughout scripture showing the authority, but also showing how he's given authority to the son and how we can now go to God directly through the son. I'm well pleased. Hear him. Hear him because he is the word of God. That's why sometimes we just need to get into the word and just hear him. Just let him speak to us. Awesome. I just wanted to test this out. I'm probably going to do something like this just in the future. I'll probably just come on live every once in a while and just open it up to where, you know, if, if anybody just wants to read together, learn together, it's amazing that we have this and yeah, I'll just open it up and we'll just, we'll just grow and we'll just read together and, and yeah, it's awesome. So it was just a test and whatnot. So right on.